Good morning, YouTube family. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you might be. Welcome to Escape on, <laughs> Escape from Crazy Town. <laughs> um, and welcome to Happy Crappy Hour. This is our live stream where we're going to learn a few things to, today together. But we're also going to share a little bit about what's been going on in our lives so that we can learn and heal together. So you guys, today we're going to talk about the nine traits of narcissistic personality disorder. So some time ago, a friend of mine gave me this uh, desk reference to the DSM-5. And today I want to read to you the nine traits that psychiatrists look, at, look for when they determine or diagnose a person with NPD. And the reason that's really important is because when you, know, when you don't know what narcissistic per personality disorder is, you can become a victim of it. But also I want to talk about not just diagnosing a narcissist, but how to how to protect yourself from the narcissist because they are extremely manipulative and they're extremely convincing. That's why we are so unsuspecting when a person comes in and if they have NPD or any, I don't want to say any of the traits, but they're just extremely highly manipulative, manipulative people to the point that you can't even believe that someone can be that that manipulative, right? You can't imagine that a person can be so sincere, so adamant, and in their lies. So that's why we want to talk about the, the nine traits. And as we go through the nine traits, I want to share with you the, the experiences and the examples of real narcissists with these you know, displaying these traits and what it looks like in your life or what it may have looked like in your life. So I want to give you some of those examples so you have an idea of, wow, I have come across that. That is what, you know, uh, an abusive person did to me. Now I understand that this is some kind of a disorder that they have or delusion that they are living with. So it's not you who's going crazy, all right? <laughs> it's these people around you who are trying to manipulate and take advantage of and to use and they don't have remorse. That is a huge part. I don't know how someone is diagnosed with NPD and then still have remorse. I think that's one of the top traits that psychiatrists look at because narcissists, they might show some slight remorse for a, for a little bit, um, but from what I hear, and what I've read, that remorse is not, it's not sincere. It just isn't. The remorse might be temp temporary that, oh, you know what? I kind of can see the pain you're in and they feel bad that you're in pain, but they don't believe that they caused the pain. So it's kind of weird. It's not quite a remorse. And I think psychiatrists realize that. So you guys, how is everybody doing today? Oh, hey, Tina, good to see you. Glad that you are here. Yeah, I hope that your week has been going well and I'm gonna share with you my happies and crappies today. So you guys, happies and crappies are the good things that have happened this week, which are, you know, of course, good and you want to keep doing them. And the crappies are the things that, are, that were bad this week and you want to make sure you don't repeat those. So my crappies this week, and I'll start with that, obviously, is what's been going on in the world. Um, well, in the United States, particularly, and it, I'm not going to get into it, but it's such a heartbreaking situation. And there's been so much hate, so much anger, so much violence and destruction. Um, and uh, it's just painful to watch and painful to be a part of. So I'm just wishing for people to come together. And I think they are now starting to come together and discussing and communicating and actually trying to resolve this. So I think there's going to be more and more resolution. I know that every every year, or every decade, there has been movement towards the right direction. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I'm so glad that we are all more aware now. We are all more aware of the pain that's out there, of the injustice that's out there. And also we, can come together and agree that none of us agrees with this violence. None of us. I mean, there are those who are committing violence right now, but guess what? The majority of us, I'd say like 99% of us do not agree with that, but we want peace among each other and we want to get through this and we want to heal. So that's 
Uh, you guys, so the hard part was all the deaths that have occurred over this week, and it has just crushed me, crushed my heart. I haven't been sleeping well, um, but here's my happy. My, um, I got together with some of my friends yesterday who prayed over all of this. You know, we all got together and we prayed over all of this, and we focused on God. If you don't know, I am a Christian. Um, I don't judge those who aren't, though. You, everybody is welcome here. I want you to know that, okay? Um, I've always believed that God loves all of us, all right, you guys? So, but I also believe that God is powerful and prayer is powerful. So we prayed and it changed our hearts and it softened and it gave us peace and it, and that's what we're praying for all, everybody. So that's my happy. It, it was really good to to get a foundation, to be get back together with people who um, are focused on the good, focused on hope, focused on peace, focused on re resolution, and also focused on hearing, right? Hearing each other. Those who are in such incredible pain, um, you know, and, and stay silent for so long. When things like this happen, they are, they are crushed and they just want to be heard. So I don't want to come against that. I don't want to not listen. I want to be able to listen. I want to hear their pain. I want to hear them out and I want to help them. So you guys, let's work together. I love you guys. I think that there's still so much hope in this world. I think that we're moving in the right direction. May God bless those souls that have been taken from us this, this week. And may God bring justice to places where justice needs to be done. But as you know, if you're a Christian, there, we may never see justice in this world. And as you know, if you've ever been abused by a narcissist, you may never see justice in your relationship or in your life, right? And we seek that. We do seek that when we have been wronged. Now, those of you who are coming onto this channel, I know that you've been wronged. I've been wronged. Um, but to hold on to that anger, to hold on to that injustice and indignant, you know, and feel the indignancy or I don't forget how you say that um, of, it, of it all, it just destroys you and it destroys your life. And I want to help you guys get past that. I want you to help you guys heal. So you don't, you don't cling to, to. I don't know, you know, this anger or this cling to resentment, cling to um, just hate, right, for the rest of your life, because it will destroy your future. It will destroy your life. And that is not worth it. It is not worth it to throw away your life because somebody had wronged you. Okay, you guys. So here we are. We're going to get into the nine traits. And how are you guys doing? Sunny clouds. Good morning. An artist lover. Good to see you. Tina C says, three months, no contact. Yes, I seen the narc in passing Tuesday. Late that night, fake Facebook request. Coincidence, still not sure, sure him or scammer. Yeah, oh, you know what? That just makes me kind of wonder too. Huh, yeah, it could be a scammer. You know, that's weird because I got two requests on snapchat to um not today but this week and i was like who is this person i just assume you know it, it the person had a, a first name that i recognized so i thought well maybe this is you know my friend's son who i've known for many years and you know now that he's an adult um he's just you know saying hi we're friends on facebook right so i um accepted it and then it's just weird you know even if it's a friend who gets onto Snapchat with you, I don't think they like immediately get interactive with you. Well, he did. He, he actually tried to call me and I'm like, that's weird. I don't know this kid that well. So after a couple of attempts of this person call, trying to call me and texting me or whatever they do on Snapchat, um, I had to get rid of it. So then I got another request from another different name right after that. So I, you know, I don't know if it's a scam and you never know if it's a narcissist in your past that's trying to stalk you or get back into your life and watch what you're doing. The best thing to do is if you don't recognize the name, do not accept it. So I deleted that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Measure Twice says, I'm sure the fake Facebook request was the narc. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking it as well, especially since you saw him or your ex that night. Obi-Wan, good to see you, says, 
It will. Okay. I've wasted half my life. Oh yeah, it will. I've wasted half my life on these clowns. Yes. Right. Obi. I'm so glad that you're here because that's what narcissistic abuse does to us. It does waste our life. It destroys us. It, up, it just consumes us. It takes up all of our time. It ruins uh, moments when we could be enjoying our life, right? Because we're caught up in, or we're reminded or triggered, right? By something the narcissist had done, even in a happy moment. And we think, you know, and that just ruins our moment. It ruins our experiences that could be healing us and helping us. So if you can let go of the resentment and the anger and the hate, um, you're going to do so much better. You're going to live again. You're going to, to have a life. I know some people are like, how can I have a life? My life is over. I spent 30 years with this narcissist and now my life is over. And what, and I totally understand that. I do. I have been there and then you get stuck there. And with narcissistic abuse, you don't, just get stuck there for a couple of weeks. You get stuck there for years. I mean, I really have not seen anybody recover from it um, extremely fast, like within a few months, but I think it is possible. I think it is possible to heal from it within a few months if you stay focused on videos like this that help you get over it and get through the, pa through the past, but also through the illusion that you were living in and through the delusion of the narcissist. But also if you watch videos like this and it explain, you know, we explain to you what was really going on in that relationship, it opens up your eyes. So you're no longer living in this crazy town and losing your mind. You start to get your life back. The sooner you leave crazy town, the sooner you will get your life back. Well, you guys, I'm so glad you guys are hopping on. Jihad, good to see you. Yes, says, I hope everyone is good and safe. Me too. And John Bailey, good to see you. Let me see. Artist Lover says, I've asked X to release my phone number from his account. He won't do it. I've really realized, wait a minute. Where are we? I've realized it's a form of control. Yes. Last night, he threatened to shut my phone off. Okay, artist lover, this is what I would suggest to you. Go ahead and start your, and create a new, just, you may have to just bite the bullet and change your number. Get your own account, get your, a different number. I know it's a hassle. I know you you have all your contacts on there and everybody you know knows that number is yours. But, you know, before cell phones, guess what? Every time we moved, we had to change our phone number. And people moved like four, five, six times in their life so they had to change their phone number that many times and people who are in the military oh my gosh they moved like 10 to 15 times and had to change their phone numbers so it's a hassle yes but it can be done and it will save you your sanity so do that yeah yeah so you guys uh, let's go ahead and jump into these nine personality disorders and i do want to talk to you about one person one person okay i know of two um, that I don't know them personally, but I've read of them and I've watched uh, interviews with them. Oh, holy cow. But I'm going to talk to you about one because I cannot remember where, who the other one was. And I'll look him up for next, next happy crappy hour because I do want to tell you examples and what's going on with those interviews. And I will put those interviews in the um, uh, as a link in the description or something like that in this video. All right, you guys. So according to the DSM, the Diagnostic um, st st and Statistical uh, Manual, wait a minute, let's D, yeah, is our mental, oh, what is it called? I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, why am I, okay. It's called, let me say it correctly, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It is quite big, and this is just a desk reference, so it's got to be a pretty big book. Um, the desk reference lists the traits, so let's get into that. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to read to you first the uh, little, little uh, beginning of it. Uh, it's called Narcissistic Personality 
disorder, a pervasive pattern of grandiosity in fantasy or behavior, need for admiration, and lack of empathy, beginning by early child, and I'm sorry, early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by five or more of the following. So we're going to get into the following. Now, before we get into the following, I know that we have learned so much more. We're the foot soldiers. We're the ones on the ground who've had to deal with uh, narcissistic personality disorder one-on-one, -on -one, right? We've gone through the mill. We've gone through crazy town. And some of us were like, once we came out of it, they were like, wait, they weren't grandiose. Um, so we know that there are also narcissists out there that are covert nar narcissists, but they are grandiose in their mind. They just don't, ex they don't expose that to us. In their mind, they know that they're better than everybody else, more good looking than everybody else, smarter than everybody else. They just value themselves and hold themselves in such high esteem, even though they can pretend to be humble and pretend to be caring and pretend to be injured, all right? Those are the covert, covert narcissists. This doesn't really talk about the covert narcissist, but covert narcissists actually do have all of these, I'm not sorry, not all of these, but a lot of these traits. So let's go into this. One, so, and you don't have to have all of these, remember, you only need five of these to be diagnosed with NPD. One is, has a grandiose sense of self-importance. For example, exaggerates achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior without commensurate achievements. So, oh my gosh, all right. I'll tell you about this um, narcissist I knew when he was a teenager. Um, I didn't realize he was a teenager at the time, but man, when I listened to him, I thought there is something definitely wrong. So here I am, I'm sitting in the car chatting with this kid. And I'm an, you know, I was an adult at the time too. So I'm talking to him, giving him a ride somewhere. He's one of, um, yeah, one of my friend's uh, sons. And my friend and her husband were divorced. So I was chatting with him about, you know, does he get together with his dad? What how's his relationship with his dad? Stuff like that. But the example I'm going to give you here is he starts talking about himself, right? Because I'm asking him about him. That's normal. And asking him about school, he starts, he's a teenager. I think he was in 11th grade at the time. He starts talking about when he was in fifth grade and the magnanimous, magnanimous action or, that he did, right? That he, some magnanimous act that he did back in fifth grade. And I'll tell you what it is. According to him, this is so incredible. He, he and his classmates had a field trip and they went to do some space, sympor, sympor, not symporium, but the reenactment. So they're all in this room and they, they're pretending like they're in the space shuttle and each person has their, their roles, right? Something about navigating or driving or whatever, communicating back and forth with the earth. So he's doing this and then comes lunchtime. So once lunchtime comes, uh, the teacher asked if, um, if, I can't remember exactly, but the teacher asked something like, can a few students uh, stay behind and kind of keep an eye on something? Because I guess they were running a program and then uh, the others will go and then come back and bring them their lunch. Uh, yeah, he volunteered. Either he volunteered or he was selected to stay behind. That was his magnanimous act of selflessness. <laughs> that was it. By, by the time he's 17, 16 or 17 years old, that was the biggest act of selflessness he has ever committed. And he just thought he was, you know, everybody should be so impressed by that. This is what a narcissist does. So number two, hold on, you guys. Let me see how you guys are doing here. And if you have any comments about that. Whoa, what's going on here? Ah, there we are. Yeah, that's good, Jihad. Jihad had responded to Aris Lover saying, I work in the cell phone business and see that all the time. I recommend you just go get your own phone line. Yep. Yes. Yay. I'm so glad we were able to help you there, Aris Lover. It is not worth the headache of staying connected or under the thumb of a narcissist. You have to become independent. If you are reliant 
on the narcissist, they will continually interject themselves into your life and cause havoc. And you don't want to give them access to you. So, yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> he's goofy. Obi-Wan, I told him not to expose her and he did. And she decided to take a break from the relationship. Ooh, I told him that it's time for her to find new supply because you're no longer a challenge. Yes. Yeah. Um, Measure Twice says, covert is also known as fragile uh, or vulnerable. I think I've heard of it as vulnerable narcissist, right? Covert, vulnerable, or fragile narcissist. Because, I'm sorry, this kind of skips on me up a bit when people type. Because they are less confident but seek supply and manipulate very well. Yes, absolutely. They are less confident and yet they do regard themselves very highly. Like they think they're the most, uh, what do you call it? So this kid, I'm telling you, right? Well, now he's a man and he's a total narcissist. We just didn't realize this. Um, he... He just thinks so high. I mean, I remember him telling uh, <laughs> telling people that he thought he was the most handsome boy in the school. And I was like, who the heck even says that, right? Who the heck walks around and says, says that? Incredible. But for the most part, if you had just met him and you weren't one of his close friends, you would think that he was a vulnerable, you know, fragile person because he was so quiet. He was like really shy uh, or acted shy, right? It's the insecurity, absolutely the insecurity. I will tell you more about him as we go, but he's not my example of the nine, the one who has nine traits. And I'll tell you right now who, who it was who has the nine traits. I did not know this before I made my last video, but after I made my last video, what I had learned was that Betty Broderick was diagnosed with all nine traits of narcissistic personality disorder. When I made my other two videos, I did not know that. Um, you know, I didn't, I don't do great, you know, extensive research. I watch a few interviews and, and then I, when I see something that looks like suspiciously narcissistic, I want to bring that out and use that as an example of what that trait might look like. And Betty Broderick did have traits of narcissism I wanted to share with you. That's in my last video. But what I learned since then is that she was diagnosed with all nine when I read all nine of these, I thought, oh my gosh, spot on. This is her. So what really saddens me is people who will get on and not see that she was a narcissist. Because they don't know. They don't know what NPD is. They just assume that she's this, you know, victim uh, wife in a marriage. And, and you know what? Let me explain something also. She very well may have been victimized, not all through the marriage, but at some point, um, because nobody goes through life never feeling pain or hurt or offended by their partner. Okay, it just happens. Um, but I think that Dan may very well also have been uh, a narcissist, but I don't know. I mean, there really just isn't a whole lot of information on him that I've seen. Um, but just kind of knowing the little bit that I do about him, it kind of takes a character of a narcissist to, to do what he does or did. All right, to, to do the kind of work that he did. And I'm not crazy about that. It's just, you have to bend morality in order to go after good people. He was a, uh, what do you call it, malpractice uh, lawyer. So if, anyway, you guys, I'm not going to get into that. And I'm sure absolutely there is malpractice out there. And we do absolutely need lawyers that go after, you know, doctors who, who botch up stuff and, and harm people or whatever, who are, who are incompetent. I get it. I absolutely get it. Um, so I'm not talking about that. So you guys, Betty Broderick absolutely has these nine traits. She was grandiose, you know, for people not to think that it's, and she, oh, you guys, it seems like she, narcissists can act and change who they are depending on who their audience is, right? Whoever they're around. But I would love to hear what her neighbors thought of her. I would love to hear what her schoolmates thought of her. I would love to hear what her um, social group thought of her. We don't get that. We don't. We just don't get to hear that. I have not seen interviews with those people. But I have heard or read interviews with her daughter who exposed quite a bit about what it was like 
uh, being raised by her or what it was like in their household. She didn't go into great detail. She did write a book about it, though, back in, I'm sorry, 2014, 2016, something like that. I may go ahead and try to get that book. All right. So the second one, first one was has a grandiose sense of self-importance, right? Like Betty Broderick. I'm Betty Broderick. And she loved it. She loved being the millionaire lawyer's wife. That was her identity. And you might think, well, she wasn't always that, but she wanted that. Like narcissists are not necessarily born rich, but they will strive to be known and to have status and to have money. Like that is their goal in life. Um, now, and then they want to have the illusion and the image of everything else that looks successful. And for her, in, the, in that time period, it was having a family, having a successful husband, driving in, you know, multiple cars and living in a mansion and having a boat and, you know, and great, great van vacations, stuff like that. So she definitely wanted all of that. So that's part of the grandiose display. So two is is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. So there you go. <laughs> she had all of those, right? She was preoccupied with, you know, the success that they were they had. And she's a millionaire's wife, you know, and they can go and do whatever they want. They get to hobnob with other super rich people, powerful people. Um, she was so proud of her husband being, being brilliant, but she talked about her being brilliant too. You know, she's like, I'm also really smart. And she may have been smart, but guess what? She didn't go to medical school. She didn't go to, to law school. And I'm not trashing her for that, you know. Um, roles have changed so much now, which is, I think, great. Because women do not need to be uh, reliant on men anymore. We can actually become independent. We can go to school and get a good job. So, yeah, I just wanted to leave that at that. So you guys, let me see what you guys are saying here. Oh, I'm sorry. I just have to scooch around. I wish I had. Oh, what is going on? <gasps> All right. Well, my computer locked up. <laughs> I wonder why that is. Oh, oh, I know why. Because it's so hot. Darn it. I forgot to put it on a. Yeah. I usually put it up on the stilts because it gets so hot. It has a little fan blower under it, but yeah. All right, so I'm going to use my phone and see what you guys have been saying. Oh, yeah. Measures Twice says, I get that video call thing on Instagram, and it is always men from the Middle East, India, or Africa. Just a pattern I noticed. Yes. Okay. That's what I was considering. I was thinking too that this fake, um, uh, what is it? Snapchat request that I got was probably somebody going to call. And I was laughing with uh, my friends yesterday. I was like, yeah, guess what? I probably got a call from India or Africa or, you know, Nigeria, which is really, uh, I'm not putting down people from Nigeria, but it, it, there are a lot of, um, I think Ghana too, I think. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who are scamming. I mean, they have offices with men on computers and women too, contacting Americans and British and Australians. And they probably, I wonder, they probably do contact people like in France as well um, and Spain, but they know that we, you know, not we, we, not just the Americans, but a lot of the English speaking countries have very, you know, they're more prosperous. So they, they call us and they tell us like, oh, I saw your picture and I just fell madly in love and you must be my soulmate. And people, sadly, who are very lonely and have been neglected for a long time, you know, they just love the, that attention. They get pulled in and then they get scammed for as, you know, their entire life savings, which is so, so sad. And that is a story for another day. Tina C says, I was only with mine two and a half months and it took me seven months now to get to 99% healed. Yes, right? That's why it's so incredible the damage that's done with a narcissist. And the reason for that is because we have to relearn how to discern reality from fantasy. The narcissist pulls us into this fantasy that we think is real. And that's why our brain, our body chemistry, we just cannot 
separate ourselves immediately, like on a dime, right? You can't just turn the page and say, oh, okay, so that was fake. I get it now. No, it's sort of like you have to rechange the way your body behaves, the way your body reacts, the chemistry inside of your mind, the um, your hormone response. It's just insane what goes on chemically and even in your body when you are convinced something is real and then you find out, I mean, you would stick your life on it, right? You would stick your life on the fact that, you know, the narcissist you were with was everything they told you they were, you know, oh, well, she told me she was this famous, whatever, heiress, or she had this gold mine in uh, Nigeria. I mean, I'm just making that up. But whatever it is they tell you that happened in their life, you know, oh, in their past life, this not past, past life, but, you know, we're not talking about existentialism, <laughs> but we're, I'm talking about, you know, when they were younger or when they were in a different country or when, they, you know, and we believe everything and we think it's so true and we live as if that is true because everything you do in your relationship with them is founded on all these lies. And when you start, when you realize that everything you reacted to, everything that you um, grew fond of, everything that you attached yourself to was a total lie, it takes it takes months, I think, to to get over that. But at least it doesn't have to take years. I've, you know, what's got me started on this is when I was um, learning about <clears throat> about other people who've been abused by narcissists or taken advantage of, and it took them. It would take them five years, five years down the road, and I was reading about them and, and their comments, and I was like, five years down the road, and you're still confused about what is reality and what is fantasy with this person. Five years. And that was after, and I think of, I can think of one in particular that really caught me, but I heard it multiple times from different people, just different amounts of time. But this one girl, it took her, I think she was together with the, the guy for two years. And then five years later, she was still pining for him. And he had recontacted her and wanted to get back together, you know, like visit her, see her, not get back together like permanently, but wanted to get back in touch with her. And she didn't know what to do. Oh my gosh. Well, the obvious answer is run, run the other direction. Do not allow him back into your life. But we don't do that if we are still caught up in the fantasy. All right, you guys. All right. I'm going on with this. So that's why number two is huge because number two was preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. That's why they tell you, you are their soulmate. You are the only person that ever made them feel this way. You are the only person who um, understands them. And your love, or the two of you are the ideal couple. You're the perfect couple. You're so perfect for them. That's their fantasy. That's a fantasy of unlimited or ideal love, right? All right. So number three, you guys, I want to go to number three and then I'll read some more of your comments. But number three is they believe that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or, or high status people or institutions. Yes. Yeah, they do. Not, okay. And like I said, not all of these traits have to be um, diagnosed in order for the person to be diagnosed as having NPD, only five of these. And this is number three. Betty Broderick also had this. She did feel that she was special and unique and could only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people. If you know about her in her jail time, when she was in jail, awaiting trial and going through the trial, trial she expected to have special status in the jail, right? Like how dare these people treat me like I'm not more special than everybody else who is here. All she did was murder two people for crying out loud. It's not like she's a, a criminal. Okay, do you hear that crazy? That's crazy town. That's the narcissist who's living in this fantasy who thinks that they are not like the criminals who, who they're sitting next to or who are in the cell next to them, who maybe are there for say prostitution, or maybe is they're there for you know dealing drugs or using drugs, or maybe they're there because they of robbery, right? She was there for murder, and she did not consider herself lower than them. 
I mean, she knew she murdered these people. It's not like, oh, I'm here um, and I didn't commit. I'm completely innocent, <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. And then she expected the guards to not enforce rules on her. It's insane. So um, let me go on. Let's see here. Sunny Cloud says, I was with my first one for 19 years. Oh, and the second for one year and seeing God at work when I let go of the past and forgave. Yes, right? Thank you. Thank you for saying that because I have people coming on here who are like, I've been with mine for 16 years. I've been with mine for 30 years and my life is over. No, your life is not over. You absolutely can heal from that. Yeah, it sucks those 30 years that you spent with them. And in your case, Sunny Clouds, 19 years. Hopefully there were some good years in there or some good moments. So, you know, uh, not that I want you to go back and be nostalgic about that, but know that you were still blessed despite the pain. Like there are moments of blessing along the way that were just for you. And then being able to let go of it, forgive. And forgive, you guys, does not mean that you trust this person or that um, they they can come back into your life. No, you can forgive them as in, you know what? I know they're messed up and this is the limit of their ability to be a person or to be good or to be kind or to whatever. Then you accept that about them, them as their limitation. And even as a narcissist, I accept that they're a narcissist and they can't change that. I don't want them in my life, but I can forgive them and let them go. Like, I, you know, and learn. That's why I do these happy crappy hours. You want to learn because you don't want to walk away completely empty handed. You actually have this treasure trove now of understanding of psychology. Really, you have this understanding of true uh, empathy, of true selflessness, of true strength and perseverance. You know, and you, that's what you have. It's huge. And, and make sure that you take that with you. Don't bury everything and, and not learn from it. Okay. Measure Trice says, I taught second grade and small gestures like that were done daily by students. I can't imagine a kid bragging about that at age 15. You know, he was like 16 or 17 at the time he was bragging about it. Right? Isn't that incredible? Yes. Yeah, you're right. When little kids, they do. They're like, look at what I did. I picked that up off the floor and I put it into trash. You know, it's like, yay. So good for you, little third grader. You know, you pat them on the back. You know, uh, good for cleaning up. But when a 16, 17 year old tells you that, you're like, what the heck, really? <laughs> yeah. So, no, Numo, good to see you. Aw, thank you says, hi, everyone, trying to catch all your lives. They help me so much. Yes. Hey, you guys, if you would, and I always forget to do this, if you would watch a commercial once in a while on my channel. Um, and, and that's, it doesn't have to be the long ones. Man, I don't know why they put these 45 minute commercials on my channel, but you don't have to watch those. But even if you watch 30 seconds of that, I think I get something. I'm not even quite sure. I don't really look at that up. That's the last thing I had heard about those. Or even if they come up and you click on the, let me see what this is about, like go, you know, whatever it is on the commercial, it takes you to Google or opens it up somewhere else and then just come back to my channel. You know, you don't have to stay on there and watch their commercial or read all of their material. Even if you just click on their um, little subscribe, you know, you don't have to, have to actually subscribe. But if you would do that, I think I earn a little bit of something from YouTube. I earn so little right now. Let me tell you guys, it is YouTube has been taking more and more money. I mean, there are some people out there who make a lot of money. Those are the ones that have millions of subscribers or hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I do not have that. So, and who knows, who knows? I just hope that I can help people. And as long as I'm helping people, I'm going to stay here. But I totally would appreciate being able to buy a cup of coffee. <laughs> so thank you guys. Oh, and if you can, or if you want to donate money, and people have done this, um, I don't really recommend doing it on YouTube because they take something like, I want to say 60% or 40%. It's quite a huge chunk. So if you gave $10, they would take $4. That, yeah, that's what YouTube keeps. So if you would go to my website, um, escapefromcrazytown.com, from there, you can go to, it's sort of like a PayPal or some kind of, not Patreon, but some kind of link like that. 
um, I would actually get 90% of whatever you contribute. That's how that works. But thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for letting me know that this helps because that is what drives me and I will keep doing that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Numo says, remove the bowl of blueberries. I'm waiting to have a scan and can't eat. <laughs> Hungry, LOL. Yeah. Tina says, my ex was very, very covert. I'm pretty sure closet alcoholic. Yes. Said he was manager at his job. Said he was very important in our small community. No one even knows him. Yes. That is part of that fantasy of unlimited success or power, right? And a grandiose sense of their importance. Yeah. So we have reached three. First was grandiose sense of self-importance. Second was preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Third was belief that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people. So it really upsets them when they have to associate with those they think are less intelligent than them. But actually, you know what? Sometimes they even, they will do that. They'll <clears throat> associate with the homeless or they'll associate with someone who makes a lot less money than them. <clears throat> maybe talk to the janitor or something like that, that, right? But they'll use that as, see, that's what the kind of per good person I am. I am willing to talk to those beneath me. Look at me. I have such, you know, integrity and such character. Yeah. So <laughs> that's also part of their thing. Number four is requires excessive admiration. Oh my gosh. And Betty Broderick absolutely got that. She was, and if you're coming on now and you don't know, she was diagnosed with all nine traits of narcissistic personality disorder. And that's why I'm using this, her as an example right now. I did not know that before I made the other two videos on her, but she, I did notice that she exhibited narcissistic behavior and that's why I made videos with her. Um, but number four was requires excessive admiration. Narcissists love it. You know, that's why they perform. That's why they do what they do. That's why they're the best cook or they're the best housekeeper or they're the best, um, I don't know, salesman or something like that, right? They're, they love shining. And that's, you know, I understand that's great. You know, and that's why they're so motivated. And sometimes they're very successful people. But they love the accolades. They, they need to hear what an amazing person they, they are, what a perfect wife they are, what a, you know, how lucky their children are to have them. That happened in my own life with my mother narcissist because she, actually she was quite talented. <laughs> she learned, she could learn languages really quickly. Um, she could, um, she was a housewife, but she was not a great mom. <laughs> she did cook incredibly well. So everybody always raved about her cooking and she loved that, just soaked it all up. Uh, so this excessive admiration, she needed it. Well, as we know, because narcissists really do have low self-esteem and if they're not reminded continually how incredible or impressive they are, they go back to, nobody sees me. How is it that I'm unimportant? You know, and, and that just drives them crazy. All right, you guys. Oh yeah. Your choices. I'm going to have to Google that list of nine traits. You know what? I may even type them down into the description after the live stream so you can look at that. I can bet money that my ex husband had all nine and probably my mother as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Obi Wan. Another cure to this is shower daily. I would absolutely agree with that. Get into some kind of a routine. And even if it's so small, like just take a shower, do that every morning. Um, you will feel so much better, more refreshed, right? Clean and just like, ah, there's something therapeutic about that. Another thing that I started doing every day was make my bed, make my bed every morning before I left the room. Now I've kind of slacked. After a year and a half of doing that, I kind of have been slacking because other things come up, but I still do make my bed every day. I just don't make it immediately right when I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Measure twice as that's wild, Tina. No one in the community knew the important guy. LOL. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Measure twice says my ex husband changed his personality dramatically depending on the person he was interacting with. Absolutely. Holy cow. I would watch my mom go from this really humble, shy, sweet woman 
when she was interacting with other people, like other wives who had, you know, her, their husbands had status or something like that. And everybody just thought, you know, in the office group, thought she was just so sweet and kind and pleasant and such a good cook. And then she would hang out with her real friends. And holy cow, people would come to my house and say, are they fighting? Because they would just cackle and caw and, you know, practically in yelling voices, gossip about everybody in their life, of course, who is not there. <laughs> and yeah, huge personality change. Numo says, hi, artist lover, OMG. My husband is still the owner of my phone service and internet and always threatens to make some changes. Yeah. Numo, I would suggest to you as well, get out from under there. Get your own phone service and internet. Get your own. They have it so much cheaper now for an individual line. Um, you can just look that up. Even though I think Walmart does something. I had a friend who said that she got her phone line from Walmart and it was like $24 a month. And I think there are others out there that are doing the same thing. Yeah, Obi-Wan says, showering daily was my first step of healing. Ooh, my umbrella is starting to blow around. All right, you guys, just having a drink here. It says, um, Sunny Claus says, my ex of one year ran into a bigger narc female that then came back in a hoover saying he did to him, she did to him. As he did to me. Wow, God is good and took vengeance on my behalf. <laughs> yes, wow, you know what? Very few of us will ever see karma working. And actually, more and more of us are starting to see karma working. I don't suggest we go seeking and watch to, to watch it because then that means we get back in contact with them, obviously, right? So we want no contact, absolutely. But if we somehow do run across them and then we learn about what has been happening with them, Oh my gosh, the karma brings you all this justice. It's beautiful. It really is. And it is healing. But at the same time, if you're still bitter and still vengeful and you're not going to be, even with watching karma work, it won't heal you. So it's still very important to get rid of that anger and resentment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Iris Lover says, oh, the ex narc would change his personality at home. The devil out at the bar in Prince Charming. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Iris Lover says, uh, he knows I run my business through my phone, but I am going to change my number. Yes. Absolutely do that. Do not rely on them anymore. They love that you are reliant on them. Narcissists want you to need them. That's what drove Betty Broderick absolutely nuts is because her husband did not need her anymore. And even her children didn't need her anymore, at least in her mind, because if he has full custody, then they really, he doesn't really need, I mean, she, the kids don't really need her. He can fully take care of them and do everything that they need or provide everything that they need. Now she, she's like, how, how dare people not need me? You know, um, it never occurred to her that she still was needed by her children. Children need their mother. They need the nurturing. They need the love. But she wanted control. So if she couldn't have control, then no. She didn't care to fulfill their needs. That's going to show up in another one of these later on. Okay, number five is has a sense of entitlement. For example, unreasonable expectation, expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectations. You know, the movies tried to paint Betty. Okay, you guys have to understand, this is from Betty's perspective, the movies. If you, there's a new movie that's going, that's, I don't know, it's a movie made for a TV movie, whatever it is, it's a series um, called Dirty John season two. So Betty Broderick is the, is the subject of that. And the funny thing is, I don't know, they go into this in the movies, but maybe they do. I haven't seen the first one with Dirty John. I've seen documentaries of him and oh my gosh, what a horrid, horrid, total narcissist. I mean, he feels, I think he also feels all nine of these. I don't know if he was ever diagnosed, but so the first series is about him. So it seems like Dirty John is really about narcissistic people. That's, you know, these two so far, both of them fit the bill. Um, all right. 
So the un unreasonable expectations and has especially and with especially favorable treatment, right? Or automatic compliance with their expectations. Now she was known to expect her kids, I mean, this is kind of normal, right? To be compliant, but she was also known to be somewhat of a oh, just out of control, whacked out mom, losing her mind on her kids. Like this is what they have said about her as you know, being punished by her, um, being whipped, you're not whipped with a whip or something, but like, I think she grabbed a, a fly swatter and one of the daughters said, that doesn't hurt me, you know? So she took off the padded part, the little flat part and started hitting the kid with the, the wire part. Like that's a psycho, that's a psycho mom. But in the movies, they portray her as this loving, kind, sweet mom who is just, you know, soccer mom that was there for her kids, brought them treats and snacks and activities okay she may have done all of that but she was also psycho mom right all right so her sense of entitlement has come against her husband and entitlement in the, the community her entitlement um mainly showed up with her ex-husband because she expected like you made a uh, a vow to me and we are going to keep it period like that's it like you there's no way for you out of this marriage and people who are uh, and i've talked about this before narcissists do not have relationships they have business contracts so in her mind he broke the contract with her so therefore she is entitled to everything and that's what you know i know they try to paint this like oh she just wanted to be understood she just wanted people to know listen her kids knew her kids felt bad for her. Her kids were, you know, would beg their father to just keep giving her what she needed or, you know, or, and I don't know about begging him to give her everything, but they, you know, he saw that it would hurt them if he sent her or to jail. So even though she kept breaking the restraining orders, she was so violent towards him and his new wife. And I'm not glorifying him and his new wife at all. I think there were multiple issues there by the way and, and it was a betrayal a huge betrayal the two of them what they did to betty um what i'm saying is that when he breaks the contract she will not let that go but she can make, break the contract like she was a psycho wife at times right um and to her that's okay like you know no big deal uh, just because she you know she wasn't going to find another millionaire husband who was going to do as well as he was and and if she did i bet you she would have jumped <laughs> anyway here we are i'm not going to go on into that because i sh i shouldn't project or anything like that okay number six is is interpersonally exploitative Explo exploitative how do you say it exploitative anyway yeah for example takes advantage of others to achieve his or her own ends she absolutely did this with her kids she keeps talking about how much she loves them, and yet she puts them in danger continually. Like when she ran her car into her husband's uh, ex-husband's uh, front door, her kids were in the house. Her kids could have been walking past that front door. I mean, she ran her car into the house expecting to like run through the house. She had a huge giant truck, right? SUV type truck, not like the little SUVs we have now. Like they were huge and you know, they were made out of um, steel. They were not made out of aluminum, all right? They were extremely heavy. She was expecting to be able to barrel through that house. Had they been standing inside of the um, little lobby area or whatever you call that <laughs> in front of the house, uh, had they been walking across, you know, the past the front door, that truck could have gone through the house and crushed them and killed them. I have yet to hear her say that, oh my gosh, I don't know, I do re regret that, I have remorse for that because I could have hurt my kids. Not once, not once have you heard her say that, or that I've heard her. She's interpersonally exploitative because she wants to use her kids to get information about her husband and his new wife, and she also manipulated her kids to try to get them to see or believe that their dad was a horrible parent and she was a good parent. And, 
you know, kids can see this. They know. They know, like, oh, my gosh, you're off your rocker. You're causing a lot of problems. You're mentally, you know, psycho out there. They don't know what to do with it. But you can't, you're, you're not going to. She's trying to convince them that their dad is doing this to her. You know, it's, yeah. So she wouldn't use them. She also dropped off her young kids. I can't remember how old they were at the time. I don't know. They were 10 and 8 or 10 and 12. I don't know. The younger boys. So she would drop them off one at a time in front of his house, not knowing even if he was going to be home. So that means she didn't care. She didn't care if her kids were sitting outside, locked outside, not able to get inside. Um, And even if he had meetings until 11 o'clock at night, which often he did, uh, she didn't care. She didn't care if the kids sat out there for hours until their dad found them. But she would tell you, she cares about her kids and her kids are her whole world and he stole her kids from her. I'm like, are you kidding me? You used your kids and put them in danger. What if some pedophile is driving by? Holy cow, you know? What if your kid started wandering and, and decided to go knock on doors next door or whatever, you know, to get inside? What if it started raining? You know, she, she didn't care. She didn't care about her kids. Um, what, she, what narcissists care about is that they get adoration. And her kids gave her adoration, hugs, they gave her affection, they gave her um, their trust. I mean, they totally trusted her because, you know, this is their mom. Yeah. So it's really horrible. That was number six, the interpersonal, they are interpersonally exploitative. You guys, let me see. I'm going to read through the rest of these and then we're going to go into the comments. Number seven is lax empathy. The huge one, you guys. is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. Did she consider the feelings and needs of her children? Absolutely not. I don't, you know, she imposed on them what she thought they needed. Like, they need to be able to play soccer. So how dare their dad interrupt their, you know, um, their soccer? Like, what, what the heck? How about they need to know that you're not this crazy, violent person and they need a parent who is stable and calm and actually you know they they need to see that their parent is going to be okay so that they don't have to become the parent she didn't care about that she needed to use whatever she thought they needed that she felt her husband was not providing you know so that doesn't even make sense like Oh, so now the only thing she was concerned about with her kids is if her husband wasn't providing it to them. It wasn't necessarily really about her kids. And that's how they are. They do lack empathy. She never once considered what it might be like the way she treated her husband in their marriage. Like the times she was a total nutcase with him. Did it occur to her like, wow, he doesn't deserve that? Was he a nutcase with her? I don't know. I, I don't know his side of the story. And there's been no evidence that he had ever like raised his voice and yelled at her or was violent towards her. In fact, her, her daughter, her oldest daughter said that she would go crazy and screaming and yelling and he would just sit down and have his dinner and try to ignore it. I mean, there's nothing you can do when a narcissist is raging. You cannot in, engage with them. And he may have tried engaging with her. And this is what I know about narcissists. When you try to engage with them, they just escalate. They get worse and worse. And they, when you, they're the worst. Uh, actually, they're the best lawyers. Because anything you use, anything you say, will, and can and will be used against you. That's how narcissists operate. So even if you apologize to them, they will use that against you. And say, see, now you admit to it. See, you are the bad one. That's why you're apologizing. Even if you're like, no, I'm apologizing because I hurt you and I didn't mean to hurt you. And then you're, they'll say, oh, but you're apologizing. So you acknowledge that you did do this. And so therefore, it doesn't matter if you meant to do it or not. You are guilty. You know, that's how they are. That is how they are. And I know Dan was fully aware of that. You cannot engage with a narcissist. When they are in their rage, all you can do is leave. But I don't think he left because his children were there and then or you just have to ignore them you have to just like let them finish their rage now if they get physically violent with you oh heck no uh-uh you stop that 
But here's the thing. If you are with a narcissist who is raging at you, even if they're not hitting you, like get the heck out of there, get out of that relationship. Uh, if you have small children who cannot defend themselves and you're concerned for their safety, you're going to have to get the law involved. You're going to have to get something put in place to protect the kids and allow you to have custody of them, which then makes complete sense to me why Dan took full custody of his kids because they were not safe with a woman who was that mentally unstable and couldn't even understand that what she did was not acceptable in any way. She just thought, well, that's just my reaction to being treated badly. So it's okay that I put people in bodily danger. No, it is not okay that you put your children in bodily danger, even though you feel angry, right? Even though you feel hurt, even, you know, and the thing with a narcissist is they live in a fantasy world where they are the victim and nothing the other person does. Every time you concede to them, every time you give them an inch, they're actually going to even see that as an insult. Like, how dare you only give me one inch? You need to give me at least 15 feet. That's how narcissists think. They don't think about, oh, okay, well, I asked for an inch and you gave me that inch and now I'm satisfied. Thank you. I'm glad. No, there, anytime you concede to a narcissist, they will use it to get more ground. And that's why no contact is so important. Every time Dan gave her an inch, she took it and then she spat in his face, not literally, but she would tell other people that that's all he gave her. And she would, she would um, exaggerate that she had nothing, nothing. Okay. You know, I had read before that she was getting $30,000 a month um, in alimony. Turns out she got a one-time payment of $28,000, which is pretty huge. Plus, after that, every month, she got $16,000. You guys, even $16,000 a month now. I'm not talking about $1,600 a month. $16,000 a month. I'm not making that. You know, this is absolutely nuts. That's, oh, that's close. That's got to be, let me think. It's got to be it's more than $160,000 a year. So plus another 32000 so $182,000 a year. $182,000 a year is what she was getting paid back in the 1980s. 80s, you guys. You know what? $182,000 a year, it's like millionaire status now. That's what it is like compared to today's economy. Uh, he also bought her a house that um, for $650,000, a $650,000 house. And she tells him, tells everybody that he took everything. He took her house, he took her children, he took her money, you know, she has no money. Oh, poor you, you only have $182,000 a year to live on, so sad, oh, that's really rough. She kept saying that to people and they believed her because they didn't know, they didn't know what she was getting. Um, Oh, you guys, it's just incredible. But they lack empathy. They do. They cannot see that that their partner is trying to appease them, is trying to help them, is trying to, to make things better. And every time you do that for them, they don't go, come back and say, oh, I'm so sorry, and, you know, thank you. And no, they're like, well, give me more. Give me more. This is how horrible it is. So number seven is lacks empathy and is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. She definitely did not ha have any consideration of the needs of her children as far as who, who they are, um, how much it hurt them when she yelled at them, how much it hurt them when she accused them of taking their father's side, how much it hurt them when she would scream profanities in front of them. Did you consider what that's doing to them? No. All right, you guys. Number eight is they are often envious of others or believes that others are envious of them. Yes, they are very happy when they believe that others are envious of them. She had that. She got to have that. People were like, oh, nobody can do this better than Betty. Nobody keeps house better than Betty. Nobody decorates their home better than Betty. Betty makes the best cocktails, you know. So she loved that. She loved that others thought, you know, um, complimented her and 
acted envious. They may not have been truly envious, but they've kind of, you know, the, the narcissist, it feeds them. They think, oh, everybody thinks that I have the best looking home. I have the best looking furniture. I have the best this and that. So they feel like th that's great that others want to have what they have. But they will be completely in a rage when they are envious of other people. Like they can't just look at other people and go, ah, oh, I wish I had that, you know, or uh, wouldn't it be nice to live in a house like that? Or, um, gosh, I wish I had hair like her hair, or, you know, I wish I had a job like his job. No, they go into a psycho rage when they are envious because they feel jilted. They feel like life is unfair, that they didn't get what the other people have. So, oh my gosh, that's why you absolutely want to go no contact with a narcissist and you don't want to be friends, by the way, with narcissists. You don't. If you listen to somebody, if you're with a friend and they're going on about how much they hate somebody, how much they think, oh, that other person just thinks they're just the best thing ever, you know, or that guy just thinks he's such a, a ladies man. All these women just want him. Right, right. And you're watching, you're like, well, actually, all the ladies kind of do want him, you know. If you're with somebody who's talking like that about other people, they have a huge jealousy issue. So do not stick around. Do not keep up the relationship. I mean, you can be pleasant. You can even maybe do social things uh, with them in a group once in a while or whatever. But do not become their confidant. Do not expect them to become your confidant. Do not share any private information with them because they will use that against you at some point in your life. They may not use it right away, but when they turn against you, they will use it against you. All right, so that's being envious of others or believes that others are envious of them. That's number eight. Number nine is shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. Now, as we know, not all narcissists do that, right? The covert, vulnerable, fragile narcissist does not do that. Um, but they do talk themselves up and they do portray themselves as having overcome all these odds and, you know, what an incredible victim survivor they are that, um, yeah, what an incredible victim. Sur I'm sorry, you guys, I'm kind of distracted by this, by this wasp that's kind of found a spot on my deck to nest. I'm like, no, uh, but narcissists are so, oh, you guys, yeah, they're so, not so different, actually. They're, they have these, these traits, a lot of the same traits on this DSM-5, right, the nine traits. But not all of them will portray the arrogant, haughty behavior or attitude. That one, I think the covert, fragile, um, vulnerable narcissist, that's why we don't believe they're a narcissist because they're like, oh, well, they don't fulfill number nine, so they're probably not a narcissist. Well, guess what? They don't have to fulfill number nine to be considered a narcissist, to be diagnosed as a narcissist. You only need five of these things. All right, you guys, I am going to go through and see what your comments have been. When you have a narcissist, Measure Twice says, when you have a narcissist in your family, of origin, particularly a parent that raised you, which is typically the case for peeps that get in relationships as adults with narcs, it's familiar to you, isn't it? Absolutely. Measure Twice also says, and comfortable, I'm sorry. Yeah, it goes on. Is It's familiar to you and comfortable. And we, the codependents, seek to please narcs. Yeah. Measure Twice says, wow, Betty Broderick wanted special treatment in the jail because her story as a criminal was different as a murderer. Yep, delusional. Yeah. I mean, just so crazy. Or she didn't consider herself a, a murderer. She just didn't. She didn't think like, okay, I took their lives, but it's not like I murdered them. It's like, well, I don't know if she ever said that, but this is how she behaved. She just thinks like, so why is everybody so upset with me? Like a narcissist can't understand why. Okay, you guys. Uh, yeah. Be careful of that. And look around too, you guys. This is the problem I'm having with the crisis that's going on right now in the U.S., it's, you know, people are getting murdered. Shop owners and cops are getting murdered. I think um, maybe some, uh, oh, 
you call it, uh, rioters are also getting shot at or, you know, to be stopped. Uh, it's, you know, everybody, the innocents that are there who are trying to protect are getting murdered. And I include George with that, by the way, definitely. It's all wrong. None of it is acceptable. None of it is okay. But for people to say, well, it's okay for this group of people to be murdered, but not that group of people. That's psycho. That's narcissistic delusion. It is not okay to murder these people. And for them to say, well, it's murder with a purpose. No, y y there are different ways to do this. And we have, you know, had there been thousands of people peacefully protesting, that is what's catching people's eyes. That is ma what's making people want to change. Um, and beyond that, of course, the people who did, um, uh, I I'm sorry to get into all of this, but I want you all to understand that I am with with the people who are behind George. I am with them. I understand that. I understand the pain. I get it. I hear you and I want to hear you and I want to keep hearing you. Um, I also understand the people who have sons and daughters and husbands and wives who are serving in, uh, in the police or in the National Guard. And I hear them and I hear how their children's lives also matter. You guys, yes. We need to change the systemic crap that's going on in our country. Let's do that. That is, you know, I understand that. And that is going to be a goal. But let's also commemorate the people, all of them, who gave their lives for this. All right. So blessings to you guys. I wanted to share that with you. Um, let's spread more peace and understanding and less fear and hatred. Fear and hatred will only consume. It doesn't produce. All right. It only takes from you. It doesn't give to you. All right, you guys. Oh, Obi says, my counseling skills helped me survive in jail and the inmates were sad I got released. Made a lot of narcs jealous. <laughs> Didn't take much to run the pod. Wow. Yeah, you know, that's, counseling is a really good skill. Um, aw. Sweetheart says, I was with my ex for 20 years. I feel like I destroyed my life. And I want you to know you, your life, your life is not destroyed. Okay. Those 20 years. Yeah. were ravaged those 20 years. Um, yeah. Became a desert in a part of your life. That was the desert, but that is not your whole life. You still have so much life left and the rest of your life can erase and heal over and bless you beyond what you can even imagine. It can, and it will just let these things go. Let, um, I'm not saying like, oh, forgive them. And I mean, you definitely want to forgive them, but I mean, don't just think, oh, I just don't even have to, um, I don't even have to look back and see that I was hurt or, I mean, acknowledge what was done to you. Absolutely. Mourn what was done to you. Mourn that part of you that maybe the, the innocence, right? the naivety that the narcissist took from you. Mourn that. Mourn the part of you that, you know, you you believed everybody, you were so innocent about things, and you were just, you know, always optimistic about people, gave them the benefit of the doubt. You liked being that kind of person. But guess what? People who are like that and wander around, they become a target. They simply become a target. What you learned was a lesson not to give people the benefit of the doubt, but to have them um, have them earn your trust. Yeah. And you're going to do great. You really are. And I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. I'm just going through to see. Measure twice says sunny clouds. I can relate. Seven years in first relationship and 16 years with second when we're married to them. Then 51 years overall with Nart. Mother that is hard to escape her control back living with her. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Ooh, if you have to live with your mother, that's really hard. But you know what? It can be done. Just have your boundaries and have your escapes. Like there's going to have to be a lot of time that you spend away from her uh, as much as you can. Like come home or be around her only as limited as possible, right? It can be done. But if you can, go ahead and get a job. Get your stuff, your stuff together. Get yourself, you know, yourself independent and get away. Oh, thank you. Mr. Trice says, I will definitely watch a commercial in its entirety on your channel. Thank you. Yeah, you know, those minute long or 30, not minute, yeah, minute long or those 30 second long commercials are great. And if you can't watch a whole commercial that's like a 15 or 40 minute commercial, just watch the first 30 seconds of it. I think that also does something. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I heard. Frost is best in the world, says, could not imagine being in that so long. There was good times, but six and a half years was enough. Made my list and doing, going on to write about the entire relationship as a whole now. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. I remember your comments in a different video. I'm so glad you're making that list. It is so healing and it keeps you sane. It really does. When your mind and your body wants to respond in nostalgia or missing the narcissist, you have got to pay attention to the list of all the things that they did wrong to you, all the ways they hurt you. And that will snap your mind back to reality and away from fantasy. We have to be able to bring ourselves into reality and out of the narcissist's fantasy. And by the way, the narcissist's fantasy, it's crazy town. That's why I call this channel Escape from crazy town. It is something that my husband used, and I used to say when we first got married is, you know, whenever we would go visit my family, we're like, oh my gosh, it's crazy town. You know, um, yeah. So it just became natural that I would name this channel Escape from Crazy Town. Oh, Nemo says, didn't realize you had a website. We'll go. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Um, Oh, Obi says, no offense, but this is the only time I watch your channel. That's fine. Oh, you know what, though? If you would, watch some of my shorter videos, and commercials will come up on those as well. Yeah. Or even have it playing in the background, because commercials will play through. Yeah, while you're doing something else. That would be great. Yeah, Sunny Claus says, Narc Dad and Codependent Mom. I am glad I got out, and I am so happy now and grateful to God for everything I have learned. Trust me, you all can do this. Yes. Thank you so much, Sunny Clouds, for saying that and for your encouragement to others. Oh, that's weird. Obi, I don't understand why. I know you say that you're a narc. And I think I saw that a couple of episodes or a couple of uh, videos ago. Uh, I'm hoping that you're not, but... If you're diagnosing yourself as an ARC, then I don't know. I really don't know that you are. And I think it would be, life would be much better if you're not. So I'd hope that you're not. A lot of people who've been injured and abused by narcissists do come out with a lot of narcissistic characteristics. They do. It's, and that's why they become toxic, right? There, there are people out there that are not necessarily narcissists, but they're narcissistic or they are very toxic. And that comes from the wounding that has not yet healed, that has not yet been addressed, that hasn't yet been figured out. They haven't pe gone past it. And that's why they do feel like they're a narcissist. They're like, why, am I, why do I feel this way? I, I just don't think that you are. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Obi-Wan says, I make my bed daily for almost three years. Yes. Um, Dana L, good to see you. It says five weeks, five weeks, no contact. I have just been oddly so exhausted. Thank you so much for your messages. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, Obi Wan says my mom would be extra nice to my friends, but behind doors she was a different person, and my friends didn't believe me until one knocked up my sister. Ooh, oh yeah. Obi-Wan says, mine was screwed for eight years and got very little for CS. I'm not sure what CS is. I didn't know, but her lie costs her this.
Yuma says, my mom gets her accolades from how well she irons her clothes and how her outfits match. Yes, they need it. They need something. They need people to be constantly complimenting them and they will do what it takes to keep getting those compliments. Yeah, or attention. It doesn't even have to be, comp you know, and people will give you fake compliments, which I don't. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not a fan of certain things that people do to themselves, <laughs> either to their hair or to their body. And I know they're doing it. Uh, I mean, it could be an expression. I get that. But sometimes I also think they really get a kick out of being noticed, right? And I don't mind giving people attention when I feel like it's genuine. Like if I genuine, genuinely think you look great today, I will tell you, you look great today. Um, I don't believe in giving fake compliments, though. I don't want to go, oh, I love your hair, you know, and I don't. Like, the heck with that. No. <laughs> And I know the other person's like, well, when are you going to compliment my hair? He's like, um, you know, unless they say that, I will not address it. <laughs> and even if they say that, and it's never happened, but if someone were, would say that, I might say, well, you know, I, I really do like your hair, but not in this way, you know, like in this style or whatever, you know, I, I'm just an honest person. Yeah. Oh, Wow. Obi says, sounds like my childhood. Yeah. Obi says, bet my best, oh, bet my friend wish he believed me about my family. Yeah. Oh, Numo says, I just read about Betty Broderick on Wikipedia. Yep. Keating Simon, good to see you, says it will be used as fuel. Yeah. Anything we tell the narcissist will be used as fuel, even apologies. <laughs> Obi says sometimes you apologize to shut them up <laughs> kind of you know uh, sometimes it does shut them up they just want to be right so you just let them be right and then they stop but guess what it will come back to bite you in the behind another time <laughs> they will bring it up and say remember when you did that you even acknowledged that you did that you apologize so I know you did that yeah it's it's uh, a no win situation with narcissists yeah Oh, I didn't know this. Okay. What? I don't even understand this. Who would they believe, you or me? Huh. Wow. That's narcissistic, right? That someone apparently wears a shirt that says, who would they believe, you or me? Like, uh, you're a jerk. Oh, that really gets me too. When people... Uh, I'm not going to get into it because I know people have different opinions and I get it. I understand your opinion, but people who believe that, um, I'm not going to get into it. You guys, it's going to get political and I don't want this channel to be about politics. I just don't. I want this channel to be, to be about healing, forgiveness, kindness, and working together with each other and understanding and reaching out to one another, even if you don't have the same beliefs. That's why it's fine with me. If you're not a Christian that you're here, I love that you're here. It's fine with, I, you know, um, it's fine with me if you don't have the same beliefs I do. I'm just glad that you're here to get some healing. Yeah. Nature Trice says, oh, yes, the envy. My covert narc mother doesn't go into, obviously, rage. Hers is a seething rage. She hides on the inside, and it's always there. Yes, that envy is incredible in Narcissist. I'm trying to think of, like, are there... I don't, I don't think I know one narcissist, not that I know a ton, but I know like four or five. I don't know one narcissist that's not envious. Yeah, I just don't. I like they, but maybe there are, I just don't happen to know them, right? Maybe there are narcissists out there that aren't envious because they have everything. Who knows, right? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mr. Twice says, be sure to hop out of the chat and give a thumbs up, then hop back in. <laughs> uh, Artist Lover says, the ex narc said I was jealous, but in reality, I was insulted by him hanging out with a bartender half his age instead of me. Yeah, you're not the jealous one. You're. This is part of their gaslighting, where they're trying to make you out to be something you're not. They're trying to make you out to be crazy to think that there's something going on and that you're jealous and that you're paranoid. Yeah, they will use all of this to try to thwart uh, or distract you from what they're really doing. 
and that's part of crazy town it does drive you nuts and that I do have sympathy for Betty for you know because she was cheated on and when people cheat on you even if they're not a narcissist you are going to go through gaslighting when you address them or when you confront them and say hey you know why were you out so late why do you have perfume smells on you what's going you know um I've seen you with this person why do you why do you you have your hands on them, you know, they're going to make you feel like you're losing your mind and what you're seeing is not what you're seeing. And that is part of gaslighting. And that does drive a person like it just jolts their brain and it, it turns their mind upside down because they're thinking, well, that's part of the how do I differentiate reality from fantasy? Yeah. And the discernment there when you're losing that ability to discern reality and what's real it really messes with your brain. Yeah, that's good. Measure twice says, um, artist, my ex did that as well at the bar. I will never date someone that goes to bars ever again. The issue is when your partner doesn't consider your feelings. Exactly. They don't really have empathy for you. Yes, I agree with that too. Um, it is not a conspiracy issue. It is a reality. Measure Twice says, regarding our current chaos in the streets this week, I agree with what you said, but also some rioters are paid to riot by international people to destabilize the U.S. and usher in radical socialism. I absolutely agree that some of these people, and it's been going on for quite some time, you guys. It's not just with this riot. It has. I've seen this happen with other riots as well. People who come in, they are not, part of the protesters they are not they come in and they start destroy, destroying things they're not even robbing anything right but they start burning they start ro um, not robbing they start breaking things there was a video of that um this week you know this guy dressed in all black breaking up uh an auto zone window it's like all the windows in the front with a hammer and trying to walk away and the act you know the the protesters some of them i guess just two of them I wish more protesters would have have been taking more stands against these people, but I'm so proud of the ones that did, uh, who confronted him and to find out who the heck he is and get away from that. And we are not here to destroy the, these properties. We're here to for the purpose that they are. They're here for an injustice that was done. They're not there to cause more injustice, right? Because you don't fight injustice with injustice. You fight. You don't fight evil with evil. You fight evil with good. So you guys, only good can triumph over evil. Evil, do, you know, if you want to watch evil triumph over evil, you're still left with evil. Like, what good is that, right? Oh, I, I have this, you know, I'm going to break for this evil over that evil. No, it's, they're both evil and you're not going to be want, you're not going to want to be under either one of them. Anyway, guys, I don't want to get into that. I bless you guys over all of that. I do hope that we keep praying for peace and, and, love and that i'm not you know i think i have an inner hippie actually um but the peace and love and everything but uh, you guys it just breaks my heart it breaks my heart the families that have lost people through all of this i just and the people who don't have a life now like that's it their life is over they they don't get to live anymore they don't get to go on and have their family and be there for their family or it just breaks my heart. So you guys, yeah, just keep praying for that, all right? And I think there are some really good things that are coming out, some really good things. Some of the protesters are standing up against the rioters, and um, the police are standing with the protesters, you know, because there are good cops, you guys. Yes, we are all anti-bad cop. Let me tell you that. We are all anti-bad cop. I understand that some of these cops are racist. They absolutely are. But not all of them, you guys. Not all of them. And I think that we have come a long ways. I mean, there are so many police captains now that are, that are African-American. You know, it's so, it's so many mayors that are African-American. So many. Oh, my gosh. There's so many good things that are getting changed within the police department. It is, you know, so many Hispanics, Asians, whites, everybody, you know, let's get everybody in there represented 
and definitely the training needs to be there against racist you know tendencies or anything like that absolutely so i do hope for that and i hope for a complete reformation that will happen here but so you guys please bless those who had been injured and those who had been killed in all of this please remember them and send your love and if you can help help their families the blessings to you for that <laughs> Oh, Measure Choice says, now I understand the whole fake compliment thing since you mention it. If a relationship is a business contract, like my parents, their friends give fake compliments. It's a transaction between them. Yeah. Oh, their friends. Give. Oh, yeah. That's also a contract between them. It's like, I'll do this. You give me that, right? You give me acknowledgement or an accolade yeah and then we can still be friends so long as you keep thinking that i'm a great person <laughs> they really just don't have relationships um not just with their spouses but also with people they it's a business contract well you guys we are at an hour and 30 minutes i was only going to go for an hour today but the nine traits took quite a while um i'm going to let you wrap up your conversations i'm going to review the nine traits real quick so you have them all but i'm going to type them out I think at the in the description so you guys have them measure twice says that is to say my parents and their friends take fake compliments the tone is obviously fake I could see even as a kid but now I understand it was a transaction between them expected yes yes you are right about that uh, measure twice says thanks for all you do you are so welcome I am so glad that you guys are here I hope that you will listen to these words and draw some comfort from them, okay? That is my intention. I want you to understand you are not alone. I want you to understand you are not crazy. I want you to understand you are heard. I hear you. And those who are here in this channel also hear you. Uh, we commiserate, we've been there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we oh, mentioned as a trait of a narcissist, uh, it is that narcissists will project their narcissistic characteristics onto their victim. And often you will think their victim is the narcissist. Did you hear that? That is one that I would add. And I don't know that it's a trait, but I think, you know, of the ones that I know, this is what they have done. They absolutely project that. I don't know why they have to or, but they just do. They will project their narcissistic characteristics or traits onto their victim and often you will think their victim is the narcissist. Maybe I should have mentioned that a lot earlier, but definitely that is a trait also that I have noticed. It's not in the DSM, but I have noticed a narcissist. Here are the nine. I'm going to read it to you, and then we are going to sign out. Love you guys. Keating says, purge societal narcissism. <laughs> If we could, yes, you know, make people aware. That's what we need to do. We need to make people aware that it's crazy town. It is crazy town to think that one life is more important than another life. It is crazy town to ignore one, you know, travesty because you support another travesty. You know what I mean? The cause of another travesty. No, they're both travesties. You cannot, like the narcissists do, pick and choose what, um, what fulfills your narrative, all right? Or what, what gets you to your ends. That doesn't mean you can't acknowledge that there are also horrible things being done to some other innocent people and that is wrong. You can stand against wrong and still stand against what wrong was committed against you, right? So I just wanted to share that with, with you guys. Um, here we go, the nine traits. Has a grandiose sense of self-importance. Number two, is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Number three, believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. Number four, requires excessive admiration. Number five, has a sense of entitlement. Number six, is interpersonally exploitative. That means taking advantage of others to achieve his or her own ends. Number seven, lacks empathy. Number eight, 
is often envious, envious of others or believes that others are envious of him or her. Number nine, shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. And you need only five of those traits to be diagnosed as having narcissistic personality disorder. So you guys, I hope that you've learned a few things today, that you've got some examples that help you to understand what it looks like when it's happening to you or in front of you. And I hope that you guys will continue to stand against what's wrong and that you will grow and get stronger every day and heal. Keep on healing. You guys are going to do great. I want to hear back from you guys, though, when you have your life and things are going well. And I know you have your life now. And some of you guys have come back, which is, I love it. I love it. I love it when you come back and let me know how good, good things are going on in your life. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Measure twice, wrote them down. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, blessings to you guys. Much love to you. And I will see you next week.